Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching the Today I Found Out YouTube channel, and in the video today we're looking at when women started wearing bras. Corsets dominated the undergarments of wealthier women in the Western world for centuries, until World War I. So how did World War I help popularize the bra? In a word, or two words in this case, metal shortage. The making of corsets required quite a bit of metal. Thus, in 1917, the US War Industries Board asked American women to help their men win the war by not wearing or buying corsets. This may seem like it would only make a small difference, but in fact, during the war, it is estimated that they freed up around 28,000 tons of steel by making this change. Similar reasoning later led to the banning of pre-sliced bread in the US during World War II with much less success. Besides conserving resources, other aspects of the war also contributed to the demise of the corset and the rise of the bra. For instance, during the war, American women found themselves working in factories, places where it simply wasn't possible to function properly wearing an ultra-tight, ultra-restrictive corset. Still needing some support in these active jobs, the bra became the most used alternative. By the end of the war, fashion-conscious women in North America and Europe were now mostly wearing brassieres, and soon mass production of bras ramped up, despite there no longer being metal shortages, nor were as many women still working in factories and the like. Women in Asia, Africa, and Latin America followed the trend. The reason the switch was more or less made permanent was that corsets were designed to accentuate the curvy Victorian ideal of beauty by cinching the waist and boosting the breasts. In the process, this made it very difficult to breathe and squeezed women's waists so much that it could even displace organs and cause certain internal problems, along with symptoms such as fainting, gynecological issues, flushing, and nausea, among others. With corsets out, women could move and breathe again. So, who invented the first bra? Wearing a specialized garment to support a woman's breasts dates back as far as at least the 14th century BC in Greece, where women wore a band of wool or linen that was wrapped across the breasts and tied or pinned at the back. Depictions of these first bras can be seen in a wall drawing in Crete, worn by female athletes during athletic events. The women in this civilization also seem to have often worn bra-like clothing items that were actually designed to expose the breasts while also pushing them up and making them more prominent. As to the modern bra, it isn't clear who was the first to invent it, as numerous patents in various nations were filed in the mid-19th to early 20th centuries concerning bras. Along with the official patent records, an early 19th century push-up bra was recently discovered in the London Science Museum storage rooms, so even before they were being patented, at least some intrepid women seem to have been wearing something like a modern bra design. The apparent first modern bra design patented in the US was made by Carice Crosby, born Mary Phelps Jacob, who invented her design in 1910. She got the idea for her bra when she was just 19 years old and headed out to her ball. Her dress for the evening was a sheer gown. Owing to her large breast size, the dress and corset didn't work. The whalebone in the corset stuck out of her dress at the top. She then, with the help of her maid, took two handkerchiefs and some ribbon and sewed them together to make something like a modern bra. She would still have support, but she wouldn't have to wear the corset. After, her bra was the talk of the party, with several women requesting that she make bras for them, so she decided to make a business out of it and patented her backless brassiere, with the patent being approved on November 3, 1914. She initially didn't have much luck selling her bra and decided to close down the business, selling the patent rights to Warner's Brothers Corset Company of Connecticut. For the sale, she profited $1,500, which is approximately $30 thousand dollars today. Not bad, until you consider that Warner's Brothers Co. managed to do quite a bit better with the patent. They ultimately earned an estimated $15 million, which is $200 to $300 million today in the following three decades. Various advancements were made on these early bras, reflecting the shifting fashion trends. In the 1920s, the flat-chested flapper look was queen, and bra styles reflected this. Soon, a full-chested look, not unlike what was produced by corsets, became popular again. In 1947, Frederick Mellinger, founder of Fredericks of Hollywood, introduced his design for the padded bra. A year later, his design for the modern push-up bra came out, which was called Rising Star. Before 1950, Mellinger would also introduce us to the front hook bra and more colorful brassieres. 
1977, Lisa Lindell and her childhood friend Polly Smith fashioned the modern-day sports bra out of two jock straps. They teamed up with clothing designer Hinda Miller, and soon the jog bra was available to the general public. That same year, Victoria's Secret was founded by Stanford MBA Roy Raymond. How we size bras wasn't invented until the late 1920s or 1930s, with some contention over who actually invented the modern sizing system. Some historians credit William Rosenthal and his wife Ida. Others claim it was S. H. Camp and Company who introduced the ABCD letter sizing, with documented evidence of Camp and Co.'s claim appearing in early 1930s ad campaigns showing such sizing. Whoever was really first, the Brazier sizing system, at least as far as the terminology went, soon caught on with other bra manufacturers. Before this, bras tended to come in a mostly one-size-fits-all variety, using stretchable material in the cup to accommodate women of varying sizes. The sizing method that was come up with, which by the way is not standard from nation to nation, can even vary somewhat from manufacturer to manufacturer, consists of two measurements. A linear measurement measuring underneath the breasts and around the ribcage, and then a second measurement measuring the bra cup size itself, which is measured in volume. In this system, an A cup can generally hold around 8 fluid ounces, a B cup around 13 fluid ounces, a C cup around 21 fluid ounces, and a D cup around 28 fluid it ounces. Bonus bra facts. Not surprisingly, considering the slight variance in sizing from bra maker to bra maker and country to country, as well as the fact that weight fluctuation in a woman, even as little as 5 to 10 pounds, affects bra size, the general consensus is that the vast majority of women out there wear the incorrect bra size. Because of this, it's often recommended that every single time you go bra shopping, you get remeasured and have a sizing expert make sure you are actually given a bra that fits you. And here's another bonus fact. The world's biggest breast augmentation is 38 triple K. Those mammoth mammaries are sported by Shayla Hershey, originally from Brazil, taking her 10 different surgeries to get up to that size. Shayla's goal is to someday get up to 38 triple M. While her reasoning behind the surgeries may be essentially vanity, wanting to keep and hold the world record, Shayla claims that her 38 triple K breasts once saved her life when she was in a car accident when she wasn't wearing a seatbelt. Her implants function something like an airbag, keeping her from smashing her head on the dash or windshield. Lucky for her, considering the volume of fluids in them, during the accident, her implants did not burst. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please do give us a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also over there on the right are a couple of other videos you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.